Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here we're going to be doing a review and demonstration on the SLG starting line spray gun kit. So it comes with a mini gun and a full size gun. We're going to be starting off by doing a quick unboxing, having a look at what we get inside the kit and then we'll do some primer work, we'll do some base coat colour and then we'll do some clear coating as well. So first up you'll notice that it comes with a decent amount of stuff in there. So you got, yeah, as I said, mini gun, full size gun. You've actually got another uh, fluid tip there. So 1.8, it comes with 1.3 in the full size gun. And then you've got the 1.0 in the mini gun. So on paper, it actually seems like a pretty reasonable kit. Uh, and it's reasonably priced. I think you can get them for around $200 Australian. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, that will obviously vary depending on where you get it from and the deal that's going on at the time. Um, and it comes with a re air regulator or cheetah valve, whatever you like to call it. Uh, manometer, I believe they're also called. Um, and then you've also got a few uh, gun cleaning tools and a couple of wrenches in there as well. So that there is the 1.8mm fluid tip, so you could use that if you wanted to do some high build or high fill primers. But yeah, the first thing I did notice when I did get into this gun is that it's just not built to the quality standards that you would expect usually from Devilbus. Even from the FLG, the finishing line guns, which I believe are made in Brazil, most of them. I know the FLG5 definitely is anyway. Um, even little things like the pot, it's made out of aluminium and I don't know, it, it could damage over time. And especially that plastic lid, you could, it doesn't have the best seal to it. And uh, I can imagine over time it may not fare the best. Even that regulator, I'll be very extremely careful to keep the thinners away from it. So won't be surprised if it's one that uh, gets damaged quite quickly. Um, but apart from that, you know, it's got a nice feel in the hand. I guess it, it looks pretty cool. Although when I was pulling the trigger, you can sort of start to hear a, a little bit of a clicking sound. And it's just, it's made in Taiwan. So, you know... I've had a lot of people ask me about this gun over the years and most of the time, even without even using it, I've just said to them, look, I would stay away from that gun. I haven't used it, but from what I know about it, I would personally not worry about it because um, you may spend that little bit of money on it you may, and then it lasts you for, say, six months and then you need to get one, uh, yeah, you need to get a good gun. So, uh, yeah, buy cheap, buy twice is the old motto that they say, so I usually go by that. Um, but later on, I've actually decided I'm going to be giving this gun away. I'll, I'll tell you guys how I'm going to uh, choose the person later on in the video, but we'll continue on. So that's just still got the 1.3mm on it, and I was using some high build primer. I do get a lot of people ask me, oh, can I use a 1.2 or can I use a 1.3 for primer? And the answer is this, yes, you can. But for most of the time, like, uh, when I think of primer, I think um, two-pack high fill, high build primer uh, on filler repairs. Uh, what I was using it for there was mainly just to prime a primer surfacer on that door. So uh, the panel guy bought the, uh, the, the car over, it got primed with a 1.8 mil. It turned out that the repair wasn't quite right. I started blocking it down. I had to put a little bit of fine filler in it. I finished it off nice and fine. Uh, we say 320 grit, two coats of 2K primer, put the lights on it, and uh, just more of a, of a surfacer. Like, I didn't really need to block into it too much later on. If I did, it would be with some uh, finer grit sandpaper. But, um, yeah, if you want to do real full uh, high build primers, I would recommend, say, 1.8 to 2.2 mil even. Um, but I did decide to include a little bit of footage of me cleaning the gun out because a lot of people, I think, over clean guns, and it's probably more the, the novice uh, DIY guys, they think that they have to pull the gun apart every single time they use it, but it's simply not the case. I'm a spray painter, I use these guns day in, day out, and there's no need to clean them out, uh, to pull them apart every time you clean them out. So you obviously noticed first up, what I did was just to wipe the bulk of the paint out, I then put a bit of thinners into it, and I then back pressured it. So you've got a bit of a gun here, I can demonstrate it on, and you can see on the screen too. So the paint comes through this chamber here. Obviously it comes down through the pot and goes through, there's a chamber inside there. By pulling that trigger and then putting the pressure back through it, that's going to clean most of the paint through that chamber there and it's going to be pushing it forcing it back up into the gun and dislodging it so there's really most of the time no need in pulling your air cap off even although i wouldn't say no if you just want to pull your air cap off i'd say you're pretty safe to do that um, but pulling your needle and fluid tip off it's just not necessary for me it's a matter of time i just don't have time like i clean 
probably 15 to 20 guns out per day. Um, so I don't have time to go and pull them apart every single time I uh, do um, use a gun. Uh, and it, as I say, it's just simply not necessary either. Um, as I was talking before about the build quality on this gun, uh, you'll see like here, so I decided to include this footage here because it was relevant, but I'd given this gun a clean out after and then went to spray it, like it was spraying fine before I cleaned the gun out. I then went to uh, spray some thinners through it again and as you can see there, the fan is just totally uneven. All it ended up taking was me pulling the air cap off. It must have just been something lodged in between there, I guess, or it's just a very poorly built gun, I don't know. Um, so I pulled it off, put it back on, and it was spraying properly again. Um, I've had a few uh, mixed reviews on this, so uh, when I get a new product or a tool that I'm planning on reviewing, what I do is I, I put a post up on Instagram or Facebook or something like that, and I ask the community, I say, hey guys, you know, who's, who's used these and what are your thoughts on them? Um, as I say, there's some fairly mixed reviews. But most people seem to say that they're a pretty average gun. You know, some people say, hey, I bought it, it lasted me a day, it just went to the graveyard, I might have grabbed the pot off it, grabbed the regulator off it, and it just got uh, thrown to the side as spare parts. But then on the other hand, there's some people that have said, hey, I've had that gun for years and totally love it. You know, had it for two years and uh, they've even tagged me in a few posts and they seem to have been able to get some pretty decent results out of it. Um, but anyway, I'm in here painting this Audi A4, I think it was. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, and yeah, just spraying some base coat down with it. I find that it needed a little bit more pressure than my standard uh, uh, Tegobis, my GTI Pros, my Pro Lights, even my Segol is. Um, so I'm cranking it right up to 3 bar. Anything below that, and it just didn't seem to atomize very well. Um, but it's definitely capable of getting the paint on nice. The, the fan isn't too small. Um, probably there's two guns that I that really in my memory have got very poor reviews out of me that was the Binks Trophy series and the Star S4000 and the reason for that was that the fan is way too small um, I would say with this you know if you ask me the question hey should I buy one I'd say you're rolling the dice you know you might have a good experience with it but you may have a terrible experience with it you might get too much thinners on your regulator, bang, throw that in the bin. The cap of that lid, it's plastic, and if you leave that in thinners, it could just melt, and then you, you know, you're gonna have to go and buy yourself another pot for the gun, and that gets expensive, and you, you just be sitting there thinking, hey, why didn't I just buy FLG5 and a ANI R150 mini gun, and I would have been in the same boat type thing, you know. I have found it goes through a little bit more material than my develop my standard developers as well. So yeah, that is something also to take into consideration. Um, if you're in a shop like me where you're painting every single day and you want to use as little materials as possible because uh, yeah, this, this sheer amount of clears that we use if we're using a poor gun compared to a uh, highly efficient gun, it's actually gonna amount to quite a lot over the ca uh, course of a full year. You know, so um, some of these DIY hobbyists, I can definitely see why it would appeal to you because you can say, hey, I'll get a full size gun, it's got a primer tip on it, I've got a mini size gun as well for, for doing, say, spot repairs or wheels or something like that. But personally, I would say steer away from it, you know, um, not trying to start any shit with the builders, but at the end of the day, they would obviously know that it's not the best gun out there. And um, yeah, get, get a GPI if you can afford it. Um, get an FLG5, which is a little bit cheaper. I think you can get them for around 150. So again, don't quote me on that. Um, and then, as I say, like a A and I R150. So you might it might cost you a little bit more, but the build quality is going to be much uh, improved, and you'll you'll have some guns that are going to last a little bit longer. But what I've decided to do with these guns is to give them away to some people from a developing country. So I've been watching a lot of Ross Kemp documentaries lately and I think that us in the West we seem to forget how good we have it. We've got so much riches, so much stuff at our disposal. We can have just about anything we like. There's a lot of people around the world that don't and a gun like this could possibly mean a lot more to some people over there. So all I say to you guys, if uh, obviously you need to be able to speak English or use some sort of a Google Translator to leave a message down below in the comment section and tell me why you should have the gun. 
So if something sort of really catches my eye, it's literally, I'm just gonna pick a comment. Um, so there's not gonna be any time frame. If I read a comment that really just sort of touches my heart, I guess, or something like that, um, well then I'll be giving you the gun. So, um, and obviously if you're from the West or, you know, if you're from Europe, Australia, you know, the developed world, you're not eligible. Um, but yeah, say Philippines, Thailand, uh, somewhere in Africa maybe, South America, um, I'm happy to give the gun away to someone like that. I'll sort out their shipping costs and everything. So I'll leave it at that for this video, Gunners. I hope you have enjoyed watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Until then, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.